Met your fellowship time, but we're going to start. Uh, and uh, welcome to the first full day of fall, 2018. If you have a vivid imagination, you can make it feel like fall outside. Maybe. <laughs> but let's start with uh, one of my favorite hymns, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Let's stand and sing this great song. All hail the power Continue our worship. Lord, in our own hearts and our life and even in the corporate body, you are crowned the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and we proclaim that to all that will hear. Thank you, O oh God, for meeting with us this morning. May your presence be genuine and real as we seek your face and seek to glorify your holy name. Yeah. For it is in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King, we pray. And all the folks said? Amen. 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 You may be seated. Welcome to Sunday on Schomburg. Good, Good morning. I just want to tell you, it feels good to say that. <laughs> I, I, I saw everybody gathered around, and I just, I just said, this is my church. And uh, we, we, we had a great trip last uh, uh, over in East Asia in our Orchard City. We'll tell you more about that as uh, the service uh, progresses. But uh, we are glad that you're here. I know we've got several guests here that are here uh, because of the report. But if you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, do us a favor. Would you take time to fill out a connection card? You should find it in the hymn book in front of you. And drop it in the offering plate. Give it to me. Updated information, updated emails, uh, cell phone number like that as well for our own folks. We also want to do something a little old-fashioned here. We want to greet you one-on-one. -on -one, and we can do that at your level of con uh, your comfort. You can sit right where you are. You can stand up. Or you can walk around and try to hug everybody's neck. May not make it, but you can try. But either way, find somebody and tell them you are glad they are here. Let's fellowship. started looking at each other and going, this is a moment. I mean, we're not expecting, I'm certain they didn't know what they were singing <laughs> or what was playing, but uh, that was just a, a precious moment that we were in the right place at the right time that very first breakfast morning. Uh, so anyway, our church of the week, every, every week we lift up another ter a church in the area, Mike Reeves at Second Baptist. Uh, this is one of the churches that has a significant ministry downtown. Uh, Mike has been there for a number of years. He's a friend. His brother is the pastor, Glenn Anthony. They're both friends and uh, appreciate uh, uh, his ministry down there. And uh, I didn't do this officially, but I'll go ahead and mention that uh, our association missionary, Jimmy Blanton, and his wife, Anita, is with us today. And we really do this every single week. We <laughs> but uh, we want to lift up Brother Mike. 
and Second Baptist. And uh, we're going to give a full report of this. I appreciate uh, having a church that is so supportive of uh, missions and international missions like this, going to uh, the New Orchard City that through this trip, uh, New Orchard City became Orchard City and references to our first city just became our old city. And uh, so, because there was always a lot of comparison for that. Uh, but anyway, we want to continue to look up. We're going to give you first names of people to, to uh, pray for during this time. Of course, we'll be mentioning them on Wednesday. But uh, just pray especially for uh, the team that we continue to recover from jet lag, but uh, also for our continued uh, missional effort there. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother Thomas, uh, one of our yoke fellows in our digging team, come up and uh, lead us to the Lord in, in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, let us uh, be with uh, Pastor Reeves as he's uh, bringing the message to his church this morning. And also, please, please be with uh, Pastor Buddy as he's bringing the uh, mission report with uh, the rest of the missionaries that went to East Asia. And... Um, Let's let's um, let's uh, pray for our uh, giving this morning as we uh, generously give a portion of what we are so uh, blessed to have and give it back to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so the one who would be reading this, were I not here, told me he would call it a reading of a great deal of the New Testament. <laughs> but there is a reason. As they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after they had fasted and prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. And so we sent off Dale, Buddy, Luke, Stephen, and with Vicki helping from the home front. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His wondrous works among all the people. And that is what our mission team did. But why? For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on him they have not believed in? How can they believe Without hearing, how can they hear without a preacher? And so we sent a team to preach, to tell, to proclaim the glory to all the nations. And how did they do that? Because, but when you receive power from the Holy Spirit has come upon you, which it did, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And time zone wise it was. <laughs> and the reason for all that is because we are commanded by our Lord, our Savior, our Jesus. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. There's more to this than just bringing people to Christ. Because having been brought, they are to be taught to be the next generation going forward with the Holy Spirit, praising the Lord across the world. And I am proud that we are a part of that. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Beryl.
Let's ask our boys and girls and Brother Dale to come down. Come on down, boys and girls, for our children's time. Okay, I gotta say this spot right here. That this this royal thing. Okay. Uh, Brother Dale was one once that went to uh <laughs> 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 Then we went with us to uh, our orchestra city, and we brought back some of the money that we could uh, use there. And we're going to share that with you. And the reason we brought it back, we're going to give you a coin, let's show a coin, and we'll give you a coin that is worth, uh, let's see, what, 15 cents? Uh, probably. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, this is worth 15 cents, okay? And, in, in our orchard city, it is not worth a dime. It's not worth a penny to you here to see it. But it's a souvenir, and uh, it says one on it. And we also have a souvenir. It's something that you can keep to remind you. Well, this right here is actually the same value as the coin. That have a little uh, pet, pet, and it had on it right here. It has the one that you can see the uh, clear leader. And on the back of it, it has a, a pretty, pretty scent of something. But uh, they call this uh, r and or human, or cha, qua, qua, qua is like bus, bus line. Now, why am I going to give you money that means something to another country that means nothing over here? You cannot spend this. The reason we're going to give you this and Brother Dale is the one that collected all these for us, for you. We want you to take these home, and we want you to keep them. You can put this in one place, you can put this in another, another place. And I want you to look at that, and, and I want you to think, the people in Orchard City, in a very far away land that lives so different than we do, to speak another language, they need Jesus. And these people here do not get to hear about Jesus every week when you do. Most do not have a Bible. No, most don't even know there is a creator God, much less. Uh, no, there is one, much less than one person. So I want you to keep these and remember to pray for these people. The people, our friends that we've met over there, and the whole nation. Would you bow your head right now? And let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we know you. We know of you. And that we can come here freely and worship you. And for all those in the country where our worship city is, we ask God that you would open up their eyes, that you would give, give them freedom of their heart to know you. Call upon you and the worship. May each of these boys and girls know what it's like to pray for people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Dale, I want to thank you for coming. He's one that's going to get all these. He's one that brought them all back all the way back. So, every one of you, get one of these before we leave, okay? All right? And all the little, the little ones are going to go with Miss uh, Deanna and the big, big kids are going to stay for the report.
when I think about the mission trip and what we're going to sing in special music time, of course, one song always comes to my mind. And we did, this used to be like our anthem, and I guess it's lack of a better anthem, this is our anthem. So we will uh, continue to call that. I'm going to let you stay seated today because I want you to uh, sing this song in a prayerful manner. Uh, you'll see uh, that, that it does express our heart. In fact, the name of it is our heart. And uh, I, I think uh, it's a long song, and I think uh, if you just sit there and prayerfully sing this, uh, you will get more out of it. So let's uh, remain seated and sing our heart. Thank you, Joe, for making me a wreck. Uh, the uh, formats can be very informal. And um, grab a and, uh, microphone over there. This is a delicate. Get a little bit closer if you won't fall off. Sort of semicircle right there. So, yeah. so I can see you mainly. Got to keep an eye on that boy. <laughs> thought that was over. <laughs> um, okay, a reminder to use your microphones, okay? Um, all right, this, we went back to the same city we went, uh, uh, that Mick Dell and I went to for the first time last year, and uh, we, we, um, we go there, if I could be on focus, Thomas, there you go. We, we go there because this couple right there, they're from Columbus, and um, we um, uh, were invited to go uh, see them and we did again and so this is our, our story <laughs> so let's see if we can do this um, and he, he, here we are this is the, the day before we left no the day we left now this is Friday we're starting on Monday because Friday, Saturday and Sunday are very long blur of uh, our travel is, are 32 hours from the time we leave here to the time we get back back uh, no 36 hours including the travel time and 11 of those hours were spent in an airport oh wait a minute 14 or so and uh, one flight 15 hours and so uh, we, we, we we survived that that's about all I got to say about that <laughs> But this is our first meal. We, when, when we got this is Monday, we connected with our old friend that we uh, met. Me and Dale met last year. His name's Matt. We actually met him in a Starbucks. And uh, the significance of this, and this is Matt right here, uh, and this is our meal, uh, for our first meal that was uh, with, with him. The significance of that this meal was when we started it. And like I said, this is our first time in seeing him since last year. Uh, I introduced the idea of a tradition that we have 
to, uh, uh, before each meal, is to thank the Creator God uh, for providing food and ask Him to bless it to give us strength. And would He mind if we did that, or even would He want to participate with it? And He said, of course not. He's, Matthew is, speaks English well, he's been to America several times. Uh, so uh, he was familiar with that. And so I prayed a very simple prayer uh, of a blessing on the, the food and our time. And uh, it, that made it significant to, to us uh, for, for the moment. Not to mention that that right there is the remaining bone of a lamb chop that I ate. <laughs> yeah. Lamb. Yeah, very memorable meal. <laughs> But uh, then we went from there, we went to the, uh, our, the English school that we went to last year. Now, you can't see out everybody there, but there's roughly 32 kids plus the adults that are in that room. And that room is about the size of uh, one of our classrooms, maybe our student room. And uh, very, very uh, uh, crowded in there. And uh, they were excited for us being there. This is one of our favorite pictures. <laughs> Uh, th this was in what we called our green room. It was in a classroom that the kids were not in, but it had that little hole in the window just to get you, and, and you can't see it right there, but there's also a little crack in the, the screen right there, too. And they were just, they, and they were fighting to get to see who got to see. Look at us right there. But uh, definitely one of our favorite pictures. Uh, uh, Luke, Luke uh, uh, did balloons there. He also uh, uh, presented them. That every 32, every one of them 32 kids wanted that balloon. I think it's clear. <laughs> and he did a great job in doing it, just having a good time. So guess what? They got one. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a project. He, I helped him with a little bit of that. <laughs> Stephen was... Play, play singing. I went up there two different times. Do another song. Came back and said, stretch. <laughs> when I did that stretch, he looked at me like, I've done all I got. <laughs> but uh, this was after it's all worth. Uh, uh, a kid uh, did, they get, didn't get one, wanted one, and Luke made one just for her. And just... The thrill of, of making those balloons and touching their life with that, it, it, it's amazing. And the rock star here sang, sang in front, front of the, the, the kids over there, and we had a good time with that. And uh, there, there's Luke again doing the balloons in there. There's Matthew, that, that's Matthew right there standing there. And this was his class. This was his class to teach English. And, of course, we're speaking English, and this was afterwards the group shot of some of the kids. You can, you know, look at those faces, folks. Every single one of them. You, they're just, me, me and Stephen kept looking at each other. I said, I told you, they're just so stinking endearing to you. Uh, every one of them. Uh, this, the older, older uh, middle schoolers that we did the same time, didn't, the class was not as large. We did the same song, balloons, and uh, a magic for them, not quite as crowded. Uh, and uh, some, some mo more, that was another night. And then afterwards, mm. we walked out in, outside. This is just outside the, uh, the building that held the classroom. And Stephen walked by and he said, it is a square. And he, he said, I want to sing. <laughs> Microphone? Well, it's not exactly how it went down. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we were leaving the school at that point to go back to the hotel. And Matthew pointed to the square. He's like, you should go over there and play a song. People were just walking around shopping. And I was like, eh, maybe not. Um, but Matthew then he grabbed me he's like no you're going to sing a song and he took me <laughs> to the middle of the square and told me to play a song so I played a song and now when he started it was just a square of folks so probably 30 40 folks out there there was vendors out there doing stuff and people just playing kids all over the place in fact here's you can't hardly see it because of light but this is toward the end. They had all come around and got that close to him while he was, when he started singing, he was standing out there all to himself. And next thing you know, everybody's got their phones up. They're, they're recording what he's doing, taking pictures. And by the time he got, oh, what song did you tell? Do the first, first line of that song. Uh, 
with the microphone. Wise men say, <laughs> when they fools are ashamed. <laughs> So he kept doing it. That was his opening song every night. And uh, by the way, you know, uh, only fools rush in. Elvis Presley, just in case you don't know. <laughs> so he starts singing that. Well, and it's a slow, soft song, okay? And the kids are buzzing around by the. When he gets to the closure of that, right about there, you could hear a pin drop in that outdoor courtyard. Everybody stopped what they were doing to gather around. Absolutely amazing. Wait a minute. And who was it you that saw Matthew talking to one of the folks? Did you see him? T t t you saw him t speaking Chinese? Oh, yeah. He was, uh, I'm, it's the neighborhood he lives in. Yes. So he knows most of all these people. I mean, there's the school there. That's where he lives. So uh, it was kind of one of those moments for him as well because. These are his friends that are doing this out here in the square. Yeah. All right, so here's sort of a recap of all the pictures we did that. All right, uh, got any other stories you want to share on that? Lots of balloons. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of balloons, yes. Lots of hand Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wait, well, tell them about the, why, the second class you wouldn't go give them balloons. Oh, oh yeah. Um, this was for the first night we had the 32 kids. And I made balloons for everyone. The next night, we were going to go back, and we came up with a plan. Okay, I'll call a student up to the front and make the balloon for them. That way, I'm just not picking and choosing. And then they get a balloon and go sit down. Well, I'm done. I go back to the green room to just take a breather. Matthew comes up to me, and he says, Luke, can you make a balloon for every child again? They are grieving. <laughs> so I made a balloon for every child again. And this was the second class. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, anything else about Monday? All right, let's move on. Tuesday. Tuesday, this is our next day. Uh, this was a, a, a meal we, we had there. A tra tra traditional dumplings. You remember these, Vicky? That's a dumpling, 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 dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> There's all dumplings, another uh, sort of traditional Chinese food. Oh, yeah, we were in China. And this is not Chinese American food, okay? This is not American Chinese food. This is Chinese Chinese food. There's yeah. <laughs> also jelly food. Uh, yeah, oh, one of the, yeah, one of the dishes had uh, jellyfish in it. Stephen really liked it because it was crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cucumber. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, the dumplings were good. There were some with veggies, some, some with meat. No donkey dumplings, thank goodness. And, uh, so, but it, it, was a, a good, uh, it was a good meal. Then we did our traditional tea. This has strongly become a tradition with us. I did it with Dale and Vicky uh, after we discovered it. Every time we went over, we had to do it, especially when new people came. So we took the guys over there. And this, this is a traditional tea. This process of going through probably 8, 10, 12 ounces of tea takes about an hour and a half. And it is so wonderful. And... Stephen's a, a barista at Starbucks and gets coffee and the the drinks and the quick word. Did you enjoy the tea? I loved the tea. It it, it was. We all brought tea back too. It was, it was very very special. Well, it was in a tea shop and look at there. <laughs> and uh, so he uh, with a little coach he did it. And this is the broad picture. And here's where the tea thing. Uh, Dale was in process of getting up. Now, th this is a guy with a camera right there, and that's Stephen's head, so you don't get a good picture of him there because he was sitting back here at a, this table. These three ladies right here, they were sitting there the whole time while we were doing the tea, and he gets up there and starts singing. Okay, they got cameras, cameras, cameras. Every time he starts singing, they start pulling up cameras, and he starts it off with that whole wise man thing. Again, <laughs> but it well received. I right, we're in a couple of music shops. Every time he saw a piano, he's got to do this thing with it. And uh, so, uh, after that, we we went to the music store. All right, t t t t t t tell him, tell him about the music store. Well, the first night at the school, 
I, unlike Luke, I didn't have anything to give to the kids. So I gave away the only two guitar picks that I had brought with me. Only two. I had a lot to bring with me, but I left them at home. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so I had to find a good, well, not a guitar store, but a music store to go get guitar picks for the rest of the week. And while we were there, I sat down on the piano and started playing. And one of the songs we had talked about singing, especially for the kids, was You Are My Sunshine. So I started playing it and singing, and everyone came around the piano and started singing, including Matthew singing with us. Which he's got a good voice. Yes, Matthew yes, can sing very well. And while we're there, Dale, tell them about the lady in the music shop. You, you're, well, you're I had turned around to see if the lady was gonna kick us out for doing the piano, but she was stumbling trying to get to her phone so she could videotape all of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that just kind of created it to be, let's do a second and third stanza of You Are My Sunshine. <laughs> yeah, I was there playing and I was closing the song out just having fun, and Dale's like, you better keep going. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we don't have freedom to sing Sunday songs. That's what we call them, okay? So we, this, this is what we're doing, You Are My Sunshine. I'm, we were going to sing that for y'all, but we got, we got too much to cover here. We're just on Tuesday. So we'll just get that. And you, you're grateful, I know. <laughs> but it was a hit over there. Um, so... We went back and then we sang that also at the school. Uh, but oh, wait a minute, that's the wall. We we sang it back at the school from the music store. It was about two blocks from where we, this English school was, and we walked that two blocks, and they got to see what China was really like walking those two blocks. Okay, and uh, and we got up here. School just let out, and you can't really see how many kids. Kids are here. This is early in it. I took the picture, and uh, then uh, I think there's another one. You can start seeing it uh, over there. And th this is the building that Matt lives in right here. So just around this corner, right there, just around that corner is the English school, and I just turned around and took pictures. In moments, there were hundreds of people around us. What was that like? What was that like, Dale? Um hard to explain. It really is. I'll let somebody else do it. <laughs> you had a... Well, this moment, the two-block walk from the music store back to the school that day, like you said, school lit out, hundreds of kids were walking around. Every single one of the kids wanted to run up and talk to you, practice their English with you. Um, and just say hello, because a lot of them only know the mm -hmm. word hello. But music aside, magic aside, balloons aside, this is where, for me, it really hit me. Like, why we're there. It's like the relationship aspect. They just want to know you, and you can see in their eyes they are longing for more. And the... Uh, I don't know. It's like Dale said, it's hard to describe that moment with all those kids, but it was incredible. Right after I took this picture, because of um, that look right there, it's so similar to our old city, except for this is just newer buildings, but same kind of thing. The people all around, and I just held up my hands. I went, This is my town. This is the city, this is the country that I knew. And it was uh, not in the fancy hotel or the mall or anything, it was where the people were. And uh, it, the moment, it was just a moment for us that it, it wasn't planned, we wasn't looking for it, it found us, and it was just, it, just, it knocked our blocks off, it really did. You know, when uh, the, the kids would come up and speak, we'd tell them how good their English was. See the glow on the parents. We, 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 you encourage them, even if they can say, if they can put three English words together, we comment on that they speak English well. And they, they, they love it. Um, Matt is one of the ones that speaks very good English. So, uh, so, so anyway, that, that, was, um, that was our Tuesday. <laughs> A moment.
a moment, yes. We had, we had moments. The best part about our moments, we in the middle of us when we saw them. It was, okay. Wednesday, okay? Um, oh, did you got some on this? Yes. Um, when we had our dumpling meal, there was a big moment where um, before we ate, Matthew asked us oh, if we yeah. would like to practice our tradition. And he brought it up, and we didn't that day. So. And yeah, he brought his bus, his uh, bus driver with him to pray with us with the meal and everything, which was cool. Yeah, he he, he provided transportation for us the entire time uh, to most of our events. Yeah, it was a blessing that he asked us if we wanted to do that. Uh, okay, Wednesday, and um, this battery must be low. Okay, the mix. This is the ball that we go to. It's the mix C. Everybody knows where it is. We, this is Starbucks where, uh, where we headquartered out last year and uh, the mall is a typical mall and they have a Toys R Us. Luke was thrilled. Yes, he was. <laughs> For one final time, I was able to be a Toys R Us kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, other coffee shop. The best way to describe the other coffee shop Beside, in the mall was it was like a Barnes and a mini Barnes and Noble, except for if you Barnes and Noble would be like a Chevrolet. This was like a Cadillac. It was much more a reader's uh, environment and so many books, nice gifts, very best coffee shop I've been in in China, and with the best coffee yeah. by by far. So uh, th that that was part of, of working out at, of, uh, and. In, in the, uh, the, the coffee shop, we met uh, Gavina. All right, Gavina was, uh, she spoke a little bit of English. She was one of the few that could speak more than just taking orders. And um, the, one of the side moments on that uh, to, is when we were talking to her, uh, I asked her about English corners, if she knew other people, you know, if she had to get together for English corners because I wanted to get her friends to come meet with us. And she said, I have no other friends that speak English. No, speak English with me. That's what she said. And I said, well, let's get together tomorrow. We'll speak English with you. And so she, uh, after she was off and uh, we, we met in the coffee shop. In fact, that's uh, the pictures right there is from uh, there. It was just, it was me, me and Stephen and they joined us uh, afterwards. Uh, but the, the, the two, four of us, then the six of us, just speaking English to her, having conversation and what you, what you discover in doing that, that's their motivation, that's why we know, is the relationships develop. They see our interest in them and the care and concern for their, who they are, not just their language. And uh, it breaks through barriers. Um, um, we had a couple other moments. Uh, tell, them, tell them about this moment right here. So uh, that's right by the Starbucks. We were inside. You can't really see it there, but the, where we were sitting is right in front of a big glass wall. Um, it was kind of like we were in a zoo. People would pass by and just stare at us. Well, one was this grandmother and her child in a little Superman outfit. Uh, the grandmother stops and is pointing at us and then like... Um, showing us to the little child, and I wave, they wave back. But then I just got this feeling I need to make a balloon animal. So I jumped up, ran out the door, and started making a balloon level, um, balloon animal at the child's level. So I got down on a knee, made that for him. We took the picture. But this is where just God works because he has everything planned out. He, everything's going for his will. And that's where we met someone named Emma. And Emma is a really big deal for us. And I'd like Dale to share a bit more on her. We will. I think we've got that coming up. Okay. Coming up. All right. All right. <laughs> so, well, well go ahead. What that tell me. Emma said that this is the English school. I got there. Yes, that's the English school that she teaches. Uh, in the mall, mainly on weekends because the children are in school, but that group picture on the top left up there is her teachers, and uh, that's inside. the. And then the bottom one, of course, is now Luke's doing balloon animals for all the teachers. <laughs> Lots of balloons. <laughs> uh, here's our dinner. This is uh, also Wednesday. This is with uh, 
uh, uh, Brad and Tracy and A. And uh, this is one of the best meals that we had. Uh, this right here is compound chicken, and that is uh, sweet and sour pork. I point those out to you because you can go into any Chinese restaurant in town and order those. But you have not had them until you've had them there. The, the, you, there's just no comparison. I, I, I can't tell you. When you eat them here, you go, yeah, that's what it, and go over there, you, that's what it's supposed to taste like. And then there were peanuts, and uh, do you remember the peanuts? They, they were so good, and uh, uh, what was it, potatoes? Potatoes that were so sweet, you dipped in water, that was so good. And that doesn't look like as much food as there. Well, we're with Americans here. They know how to order proportionately, and we still took home another meal for them. By the way, that, uh, that, the other two meals you've seen, they take that home. It was probably three or four meals afterwards. Uh, but great dinner there, just hanging out, be, being friends, and talking about everything. So Thursday, okay, this is our Thursday. Um, uh, we, uh, this is the day we had our English Corner with uh, 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 Gavina, and uh, it was just special. But also Thursday, this is, uh, go ahead and tell them about this, Emma. Emma's right there. We had told Emma that we'd stop by before we left and, and uh, make plans for the weekend. We were going to go on there on Saturday and uh, do for them what we'd done for the other English corner, I mean the uh, English school. But I got a text back from her after that, and it said that the mall needed at least a week's notice so that they could approve us being in there. And her manager wanted us there. She wanted us there, all the teachers, but the mall would not. So... Uh, we stopped by again before we left the city and told her that next year we would give her plenty of notice as to when we would be back and uh, she could get the permission. So this is one of our pursuits next year. This is right in the mall where everything else is and uh, she speaks real good English. We've already had a couple of chats on WeChat. So this is a project for next year. And the best part about this, all these folks you see right here have a level of English that we can communicate, build relationships, make friends with. And so, the English schools now, all right, we go to the English schools. Truth is, we do not go to the English schools for the students. We go there for the English teachers. Because we're there for the students, the English teachers love what we're doing for their students. Teachers, you understand how that works. But what we want to do is invest in the lives of the teachers themselves. And uh, because they have language and we develop the relationships, earn the privilege of sharing about our creator God. So that, that's the path of, of that. And uh, he, he, here's another meal. Now this meal, a little bit disappointing about this meal, and a couple things on it. Uh, this is with Matt, Matthew. This was the meal that I was gonna tell him uh, uh, lead, lead questions that he would eventually ask me about the creator God and talk more about it. But he brought two of his English his teachers with, uh, with him. They said, this is uh, Ivy and Emma. And this was our first social interaction with them other than seeing them at the school. I didn't have the freedom to share about uh, our God uh, with them because of the trust level. And uh, it's, it's, it's real it's simple, but yet it's complicated how all that develops. And it just takes time. This was our first social. We had had numerous contacts and touches with Matthew, and he he was already he already knew that we were um, uh, Christians, if you would, or believed in the Creator God, but or religious people, as uh, he mentioned. Uh, so we didn't get to do that, and it was disappointing. But yet we trust the providence of God on that. Uh, I had to put that right there because that's Chinese barbecue pork. Oh man, Texas, eat your heart out. <laughs> all I'm going to say about that. The, all, the reason I got the pool table in there, we walked in there, we found out they had a pool table and uh, started playing and they, they showed us where it was. This was, we spent an hour in there for what, 98 choir, 78 choir, something like that. $14. It was the only recreational time we had the entire time trip. We did have some downtime uh, on one afternoon, uh, getting over uh, the, the the week, 
the, you know, the week uh, that I actually had about an a, a hour and a half nap. But other than that, a couple hours in the hotel room and this moment right here, everything was going or collapsing. Yeah, we were making total pools of ourselves there. Right? Yeah, that, yeah that, nobody could play pool. Chalk one up for Dale. Yeah, yeah, Dale, yeah. So come Friday, all right, this is our Friday. Uh, this was our sort of goodbye day uh, for, uh, for Gavin. And uh, we had one more meeting with, with, with her and uh, another English corner, and she helped us in some shopping. And, uh, uh, and we can't, ain't got time for all the details because it's a long story, but we ha had a moment with her that was sort of uh, had a little bit of tense, uh, tenseness with him, with her, not tense, um, disappointment that God used uh, to sort of, uh, I think, take our relationship to the next level and uh, we give an opportunity we'll be able to tell that story um, and uh, we also talked about uh, next year plans with Emma we've already mentioned that and then uh, then we had uh, uh, the English corner at Brad and Tracy's now they're English teachers in a university they have a combination of 60 students it was 65 there that night. 65 so. students came into their home. And you, you're seeing most of them there. Now, their home is, this is the biggest room. There's a, dining, uh, there's a combination of the kitchen in there. And there's a little living sitting area right there. And there's a bedroom the size of that room and another bedroom right there. Four rooms, 60-plus people in there. And uh, they... they invited all of their English speaking students or their English classes to come to their home, uh, actually her sister's home, and uh, have an English corner. That's what we called it, or that's what they called it. They did not successfully develop this last year. So they started off, this is the first Friday night of the, uh, the school year. They did not know that Americans were gonna be there. They came because it, it, everybody said they were coming. Then they got there, and they had us four Americans there. And rock star and balloon man here. <laughs> you know, I did a little bit of magic, even, uh, and, and that, but it, it, that, it was just absolutely amazing. The, the kicker on it, well, let's see, there's a couple more pictures here. Then you get a little idea of this, uh, the, 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 they were sitting there. And you, can you see how many people's got their cameras up? It, it, cra crazy. All right, so here, here it is. Now, after the, the, the group time, here's Dale right here sitting in one group over here. This is uh, the taking turns here, Stephen, around uh, there. Uh, another another group right there t talking. And uh, and uh, the, 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 there's a, the, uh, another back picture of that. Me, me and, uh, well, there's a bit better picture of it. Okay, so they're just sitting there. T Dale, tell them what this moment's like. This moment here is great. I mean, these kids are practicing their English. Uh, right here, I'm asking this girl what her favorite movie is, or uh, I think it's something like that, and, or who her favorite movie star is, and she's doing the best she can with English. And uh, But this right here was fun. I mean, absolute, because uh, I would have to talk a little slower, and uh, I've got a southern draw anyway, so it really did confuse it. Oh, yeah, we all do. <laughs> But uh, which is different than a Chinese accent of English. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> but they would ask questions if they were saying it right, and this was encouraging. You know, we would we'd tell them how good they were talking, and uh, if they said it wrong, we would try to, to to correct them and all that. But all in all, it was a a good night. I mean, you, let you, later on we'd flip your yeah. text. Oh yeah, my text. One of the, uh, I, I thought you had a picture of that, but you don't. I, no, I don't. One of the ch uh, kids there, his name was uh, Vince. That was his English name. And after everything had cleared up Friday night, we were all just sitting in the living room with the missionaries. I got a text on my WeChat from Vince. He wanted to know if he could call me Uncle Dale. <laughs> How cool is that? That's awesome. I mean, that, that was uh, amazing to me. And... Dan, Heather had to tell me you're going to have to just cut him off because he chatted with me for an hour. And uh, I finally just had to tell him, look, man, i got to go to bed. <laughs>
Not, not a good picture of how close we were. I was here. I was doing a little magic. Luke had see the arrow right there. Lots of balloons waiting for him out there. This is one of the iconic pictures. This was that night. This is A, the, their, the, their little boy, and Dale. And you cannot see how clear that is. It, the delight of A just looking up at Dale. Uh, just very, very precious. Okay, s Saturday. Um, <laughs> Saturday we went to the beach, okay? And in going to, going to the beach, oh, wait a minute, back up. Uh, what, while wow, that, that picture right there, that, that, oh, this, this one, I'm sorry, this one right here. While we were there, he did his three songs, <laughs> and, uh, and then Matt in the back, not Matt, Brad in the background said, Do a Sunday song. I said, Do a Sunday song. So he got to do a couple of the worship songs. And, uh, and you know, it, Brad's all about exposing to him, tell him about it. So they told me that, and they, obviously for safety reasons, Buddy and everyone was telling me this whole time, you got to be careful what you say, what you're saying, everything. They told me to do Sunday songs. I looked at Buddy, I was like, do a Sunday song. <laughs> and he's like, yes, do it. I'm like, yes, I got plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> I, sang, I sang one, and you can see they know enough English to where they could you could see on some of their faces who were really paying attention, they could kind of tell what it was about. And then after I finished one, Brad said, do another. I looked at Buddy, Buddy said, do another. <laughs> so I did another one. Um, the second one I did, I, I've sang here before, I think y'all have done it before too, it's called What a Beautiful Name. Yeah. Um, love that song. And I sang it and it uses more of the language about Jesus and his love. And you could see it more, they were like, figuring out what it was about, which was a cool moment. Um, but just the ability to sing the songs that I love the most and that mean the most to me to them was awesome. Yeah. Okay, Saturday, we went to the beach, and we this lady right here, this is Miss Tian, and I met her last year, and uh, she uh, we, we chat, we chat to like Facebook, and uh, over there, and she had uh, reached out to me in last year and said, "When are you coming back?" Like in December, she had done that, and she was a sales clerk. And we we got to know her. She spoke English, and I just sort of looked at her as a sales clerk. And uh, so she she told me, "When you come back, let me know." Well, so we, we waited till Saturday. We got there, so I sent her a text and said, "We are here. Are you working today?" And she came back to me, "I will be there in thirty minutes." <laughs> And sure enough, about 40 minutes, she, she showed up, which, you know, it's China time. But uh, she showed up, and she was so excited to see us. She wasn't working at the same store, which was a much larger store. Her mother had a store there. Well, you know how that goes. We got people now. So we had to go in there and shop till we drop in this little bitty store that's not, that it's not a quarter of the size of this, this worship center. And so we did. We bought stuff in there. I bought stuff just because, okay, that's cool to bring home. And uh, oh, oh, that was just <laughs> three of us uh, splurged. We brought home uh, Chin Chinese swords. Yes. I mean, the kind you pull out and go, ah! Yes. <laughs> I mean, they put their swords in my suitcase to bring home. So, <laughs> yeah, we were clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy, me was smart. We used the excuse. Oh, I don't think this will fit in my bag. Yeah. Here, put it in your room. <laughs> yeah, blame your room. So anyway, so we did a lot of shopping there. Then after, and she was so kind. We wouldn't bargain with her. You know how we don't do that. And she's telling me this is three hundred quire. Uh, uh, she said, but that's mama price. My price two hundred. No, no, no. I'm gonna pay the. I'll pay the full amount. No, mama price three hundred. My price two hundred. And, you know, so, okay, <laughs> so uh, we 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 bought and bought, bought stuff there, and uh, and it was at the beach, and then then we went out to the beach, and so they got a picture of all of us standing at the beach. Okay, we left, but we didn't even get our toes in the sand. Like, who cares? If it's the sand. But um, but we gave her a quarter. We uh, we uh, who was it? Dale? 
Luke, Luke had the quarter. You had the quarter from Georgia? That one, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we gave her for that one, and she held it up. She was so excited to receive it. You know, just the slightest thing like that is a gift for her was precious. Well, anyway, she ended up taking us to lunch. Uh, we went to, she, she said, I'll take you to American food. And it was in town. We didn't have enough time to do that. We couldn't get a taxi. So we ended up going to the closest K KFC on a bus that was yeah. almost empty, you know. <laughs> but so we went to KFC and I had lunch with her and spent a lot of time with her. And the relationship just went from that clerk into a, a relationship of significance, of uh, of endearment that, that uh, is there she's no doubt about it, is our friend. She will be our friend for downtown. Next time we go there, I, we will let her know when we're going there and perhaps spend more time let her show us the downtown area that we have not seen much. But it was another one of those catapulting events of where didn't think it was going to be as deep as it was. It turned out to be much deeper just because we were there. And uh, it, it, it was significant. Uh, buddy. Buddy. Yes. Another thing with uh, Miss Ten on the bus was she asked you if you would teach her English. Oh yes, and then you asked her if she had some other friends who was willing to learn English, and she said yes. So there we go again with another project for next year in the English corner. There. That uh, we will be in contact with her as soon as we get there, rather than waiting then to the last sat to the uh, the Saturday to uh, to see her. Okay, Sunday. Don't have any pictures of Sunday except for this one right here. Now this is the university um, that they teach at, okay? And th this building right here, and the proportions are, look crazy, but this is a very big courtyard square. That is a huge building, and this building right here is at a 90 degree angle of it. Well, this building and this building face each other. This is one of those pano type pictures, so it's very distorted. But it gives you an idea how big that right there is a large screen for uh, monitor type thing like at a stadium and stuff where it's not quite as large as that right here, but it's big enough. But we were there Sunday with the group and it was just believers, just English teachers out there, except for John. John is uh, from Egypt. He speaks Arabic and uh, he was uh, not teaching English. He was teaching something else. But so there was Brad, Tracy, Heather, Megan, John, and, and little Abe, and the four of us. And uh, group worship with guitar. Normally they just sing according to YouTube on TV. Uh, with uh, and so to sing live music and worship, it, it was a blessing. Bible study. We went through Psalm 67, one of my life team studies we had done, and uh, it was it was just precious. Uh, to have that time of uh, worship and prayer. And it, part of our responsibility when we go, uh, in fact, the only reason we go is because go to this city is because they are there. And when we are there, we encourage them so deeply. Uh, you just, you can hear the depth of the appreciation in their voice, in their, see it on their face, that we are there. They are there. They've got boots on the ground. They, they live there. They're in, around the Chinese folks all day long. Their friends right there, the, these friends right here, are the only English-speaking friends they have. And so for us to come over there, and he told us we are the only group that came over this year to see them and will be the only group that will see them next year. They have nobody else coming to see them, to spend time with them. So it is precious that we have connected with them and that they are our friends and how much it means to them. Uh, if, anything you want to say about the worship time? Then we had our last day uh, with um, uh, uh, Gavina. Uh, she, this was, uh, she, she wanted to make latte for us. Well, me and Stephen don't drink lattes. Who wants to put that much milk in good espresso? <laughs> but she wanted to make, uh, well, she said cappuccinos, but she made lattes. Um, so, so anyway, uh, she brought, brought them out. That's a picture of one. Uh, Stephen's came out that had a heart that took up the whole cup. 
It was a big heart. And then she brought out uh, uh, there two that had uh, the, the little flowers, the Rosetta flowers. And uh, Dale had a little bitty heart on the top of his little Rosetta. I got a small heart and, uh, and she uh, made those for us and she made them special for us. And we didn't see it, but she, we didn't pay for them. I, I, I don't know if she, it was a perk or she had to pay for them or not, but she wanted to do that for us. And um, it was sort of, sort of sad because it was our last last day. She helped us with some shopping, and uh, we we said goodbye. Won't want us to be praying for her. She's on our Wednesday night prayer list. She's stuck to go to another city about four hour uh, bus ride away to uh, be a train for assistant manager. She said she will be in that city for maybe a year, maybe not. So we don't know if she's going to be in Orchard City. Uh, when we go back. Either way, we are going to stay connected with her because she is going to be a life friend and uh, very, very deep. And uh, as we left in this little gift area section of the bookstore, who, Luke, were you the one that found it? Yeah. Found a, uh, a bookmark that was similar to that that had the word Jesus. So it's a little bit more uh, incognito, but it had the word Jesus inside a fish-shaped bookmark. And so I bought it for her, and it was like 15 quad, really, really, really cheap. But I gave it to her while she was working. I gave it to her across the counter of the coffee shop. And it was the first introduction that I had anything to do with God and the Creator God. And all I said was, when I said, this I want to give to you, uh, from this city, from me to you. And I said, it's in the shape of a fish that is significant. And do you see the words Jesus in there? I said, Jesus is very special and very special to me. I want you to know more about him. And that's how we left it with her. And it was the first opportunity that I felt like I had the freedom to do that. And so uh, our our heart is heavy for her, for the possibility we may not see her again. But here's another reason that our heart is so heavy. You can't read those words, but these are three books. This one's upside down. And this one says, A Treasury of World Classics. And the classic is Charles Darwin, The Descent of Man. These are faux books. They're false books. And there were a dozen oh, more. or more just set as decoration in the bookstore coffee shop. And they were there for decorations. We were in one of the restaurants had uh, that we ate at had uh, uh, the same, though we didn't say much about the Peking duck, but we had Peking duck th three different ways. Oh, yeah. But it had the same exact books on bookshelves for decorations. And I, there's no doubt about it that somebody with the, the, the government has made these books available for them to use in decorations, and the same exact book, you pick them up, they're hollow. But that that's, th this picture right here, this slide right here, gives us how we connected, who we connected with, our burden for them about Jesus, and how they are hearing nothing but atheism. On the way back to the airport, Matthew, uh, which uh, this is us happy on the airplane headed home, uh, but uh, on, on the way to the airport, Matthew, uh, I, the Saturday, Sunday night, I texted, Sunday I texted Matthew, I said, do you think that you and your friend could take us to the airport? Um, if not, we can take uh, two taxis, probably would have taken three, but um so, and he came back, the first, his first text was, of course. And then he said another one, and we, we got together with the time. And so they came to the airport, picked us up. He had a Buick, a Buick, no, it wasn't a Buick, but a minivan that could put everything in there. And we were talking on the way to the airport. It was about a 45-minute drive. And he was talking about us coming back next year. And we told them we will come back, and our goal is to come back to be able to include two weekends. Because the weekend is the biggest, busiest days. All day Saturday and all day Sunday they teach. Well, we're not going to teach on a Sunday. 
So uh, uh, Saturday is the only day we have. So we're going to go there and next next year and teach all day on Saturday. Um, and what we want to do is also teach in the other English school as well on on a, the, another Saturday. So we want to be able to get there in time to set up English schools on Saturday and and in on Saturday. So that means we need a little, little two full weekends there. And I was talking about him, and Matthew said, "I want you to come Saturday." He said, "I will pay you. We will pay you." <laughs> And I said, no, no, we don't do it for the pay. We don't want it. We do it because we love Chinese people. We love you. We want to do it for you. And uh, we want to do it for the children. And y'all make sure I get this, uh, the, this uh, Pretty language much we right. Got it down, yeah. do, do, do you quite, yes. Um, he said, I know you do. He said, people with religion have big hearts. You have a pure heart. And I said, not our heart, but the creator God through us. We have a big heart. And so that was the first opportunity to have such a clarity of beginning the process of telling him about the story of salvation through Jesus. Now you say, well, we... This is the second trip within about a year and a month that, that we've been. And we just have gotten to the point to where we're ready for that conversation. But look at it this way. We have spent six days last year and eight days this year. That's the equivalent of two weeks plus travel. Only two weeks in a city. And everybody but except for the people on campus, we met through our just being in the city, being Americans in their city. In two weeks' time, we've developed a relationship with people that we are ready to talk about Jesus with, that we're praying that we'll have opportunity to talk to Jesus with. It's a year, and maybe a year before we go back, but we need another week and a half there to make a difference. If we can just, if we can touch the life of Matthew and he can come to Christ, he is an influencer. He is a leader. He's a leader in that English school. He has passion for his people. If we can see him come to Christ, we will affect dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of Chinese people in the days and years ahead. And so I want you to grasp hold of this. Though, though you, we named people up here and we yet have ex shared the, full, the gospel to, to uh, any of them yet, we are in process over the next two, three, four years of visiting that we can affect dozens to hundreds to generations of Chinese people. That is why when we sit there and we see the crowds, we see the children, we see the love that Matthew and Gavlin and even Miss Tian and and even even Emma uh, Emma 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 that they see for us, we have a a platform an ability to communicate to them the gospel that they will not hear, they will not hear it in the city that they live. So this is our story. This is our purpose. I have been praying for Sunburg Road the past three months, a simple prayer, that we as a church body, as a corporate body, would think more missional in Columbus, Georgia. Now, I just started praying that, like I said, about three months ago in my own quiet time, I don't think I've shared it with any, any, any of y'all individually. Going to China afresh and coming back, I want us to have the passion that we have discovered there for all these people who are lost and don't know Jesus to have that kind of passion for the people in our own city. 
and that for us as a corporate body to see people that we do not know is a potential relationship to invest in, to have the opportunity to share Jesus with them. It's too easy to let our, our culture block us out for being proactive in that. That when we go to a foreign culture, we have opportunity to do that. So as a team, that you can see the joy and the burden and the vision that we have for it. Dale, the first day was there last year. He said, I'm, I'm ready to come back already. These two, it took a couple of days. <laughs> After the taxi cab ride to the motel, they probably did wish they did it. That's a great story. Ask Luke about it, his first taxi ride. He got out to color this paper. Yes, he did. <laughs> very slowly, very concerned. In his head. But we're, we're ready to go back. I'm ready to lead us to make a difference in this city, Columbus. Yeah. Would you pray with me? <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to take this trip. But for this moment, this morning, Oh God, with the stories, the fun stories, the food, the friends. Lord, I ask you that you would turn this moment into open up in our eyes, open up our heart to be burdened, to think how we can really reach our city of Columbus, Georgia to the people that you have placed around us. Oh God, give us a fresh vision of lostness. So easy to see it in the eyes of foreigners. But oh God, open up our eyes to the, our work, co-workers. to the strangers in Walmart, to our family and friends. Help us, oh God, to know the burden of lostness afresh. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our lives this week, the past two weeks. Even though I've been many times, Lord, I'll never be the same again after this one. I know each of us will. Oh, God, give us that fresh vision of lostness. With your head still bowed in a heart of prayer, worship. Would you personally ask our Creator God to send His Son to die for our sins? Would you ask Him to open up your eyes to just one person around Him? You can pray for Him. Live the life before them. And have opportunity to share Jesus with them. Church, would you ask God to give you that burden? And Lord, as pastor, I ask you to give us this burden as a body, a body of believers that come together to worship you, that love each other. Lord, give us as a corporate body that burden of lostness. For the ones that are around us in this community, both Robbins Ness and Bridalwood, Sugar Mill, 
Lord, may we see it. May we know it. Thank you, oh God, for what you're doing amongst us, within us, and even through us. Now be with us now, Lord, in these next few moments as we take these decisions and put them in concrete. For it's in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. If you would, we're going to take a take your hymnal and we're going to sing a hymn of commitment. But this is an invitation time. What I mean by that is I'm inviting you to make a decision to follow Jesus either continually with a fresh awareness of the lostness around you or if you do not know this creator God, the God that you already know is on our coin, the God we trust. If you don't have that personal relationship with him and you want that relationship, you want to come, I invite you, you be down here for this altar. If you got somebody you want to pray for that you already have a burden, the altar is open. We're going to come. We're going to sing hymn number 356. Would you please come, be a part, make this commitment deep. Hymn number 356. Jump.